I was waiting for the sun to deliver my next victim, waiting to to release the power of God within me, you know? I wasn't ready yet, so she was a lucky one, but I had that fever in me, growing. It was something that I worked on for many, many years. People, especially women, don't feel attracted to strong men in their times of need. No, I had to be weak weak and defenseless, maybe even at the mercy of the world with this cast on my arm. an old story at the car park of Lake Sammamish. I had to hitch my boat, but with my arm in a cast, I just couldn't manage it on my own. I needed help, and that was the tag. I'm Ted. Ted. Ted? Ted? So, you approached the first girl. Then what happened? It wasn't so much an approach. Just a friendly hello. Would have been too much to ask for, you know. To get a girl at the first time of trying. But you're on the hunt. Yes, I'm on the hunt. And what time is it? It's about midday. I don't need a watch or a clock to tell the time of day. I can work with the sun and the stars. You kinda got to. 
So there's an hour before you speak to Jenna's. What do you do? Well, I'd already tried it on with three different women. You know, some women can smell fear, and some are just begging to be victims. The first three girls got frightened by me when I approached them. The first girl said she was in a hurry and ran away. The second girl, I actually get back to the car and I've, I've opened the passenger door of the Beetle to let her in. But because there's no passenger seat, she gets spooked. And I mean really spooked. Her head's inside under the roof and I'm boiling hot right beside her. And then... Then she pulls her head out of the car and makes some excuse that she's got to go to the lavatory. I'm saying I'll drive her there, but she's spooked. Spooked beyond belief and then she's off into the day. I never seen her again. So you asked five different women that day for help, huh? Well, yes I did, but that was all through the day. By now it's 12.30 and Janice is looming large on the horizon. She's small, no, she's a very small framed girl. Very pretty, long hair. <laughs> like them all, Ted. Well, yeah, like them all. So, Janice is lying there, on top of her blanket, and I bend down next to her and introduce myself. I can feel her wanting to be with me almost immediately, and I lie down next to her. A few of the couples around us, they um, turn their heads, you know, as if I've entered into their personal space. It's crowded, and I can hear people talking around us, Janice and I, and it's that simple. She wants to come almost at once, and after four or five minutes, we're walking towards the car. What is she talking about, Ted? What's she saying? She's talking about nothing, just about the weather and my boat and me. She likes me, you see. She's in the back of the car, out cold under a blanket. I've got her laying between the front and back seats, down in the footwell. She's invisible to the world, and oblivious to the world. Where did you take her, Ted? No comment. What difference does it make? Come on, Ted. Nothing's gonna change what happens tomorrow morning. We know you murdered those girls. So what difference does it make to you now if we know the whole story? It makes none, and you don't know jack shit about it, officer, okay? So just stop asking and we can move on. Eight people saw you that day approach the girls. Yeah, eight people. Even after you'd done those posters.
posters all over Seattle. I'm sure someone would have recognized me, you know. They were pretty good drawings of me. You had my name, you had my face, but you didn't have me. Tell me about Denise. How'd you approach her? Denise, oh Denise, she practically came looking for me. <laughs> she walked, she walked right up to me after she's come out of the public bathrooms and just casually said hello. I asked her to come and help me hitch my boat and she just about ran to the car to help me out. I even had to ask her to slow down so I could keep up. And then where, Ted? I told you guys I'm not saying. If you keep pressing, I'm gonna clam up, okay? Okay, Ted. You won't tell us where you went with the girls? That's your choice. Once you got them to where they were found, what did you do with them? Janice, meet Denise. Denise, meet Janice. Interview with inmate 069063, Theodore Robert Bundy, resuming at 5.17 p.m. January 23rd, 1989. Officer Bill Hagmeyer, interview. Did you ever bury any of them, Ted? Oh, yes, in my more coherent moments when I was really going all out and took my time. Yeah, I did. Why take your time with only some of the girls, but not all of them? You have to understand, murder is not about lust, and it's not about violence. It's about possession, you know? You feel the last bit of breath leaving their body. You're looking into their eyes. A person in that situation is God. I played God with some of the girls, going back, visiting their corpses time and time again, owning them, manipulating them, fantasizing about them, about their bodies, about their hair, about their makeup. 
I would visit them and dominate them about as much as anyone could dominate anything. The place has become a part of you, and if, if you are godlike, the place has become holy, like a church. The grounds where you kill them or leave them become sacred to you, and you will always be drawn back to them. Sometimes I use them to, you know, pose them to kind of recreate what I wanted. Hell, with enough time, I dress them in particular clothes, pose them in certain ways, just... Why did you do that? Well, there were some images, pornographic images, that particularly appealed to me. What kind of images? Oh, well, just specific things, actually. Some of them were from the covers of magazines that I liked, detective magazines and such. Sometimes I took Polaroids of them to keep as a kind of souvenir. You took pictures? When you work hard to do something right, you don't want to forget it. Come on, Ted. Porno fantasies? That's why you killed all those girls? I just liked to kill. I wanted to kill. But you beheaded some of them, then carried their heads around with you. Why was that necessary? How does that fit into your fantasies? What's one less person on the face of the earth, anyway? Come on, Ted. You don't really mean that now, do you? I'm the most cold-hearted son of a bitch you'll ever meet. You know, there are lots of other kids playing in the streets all around this country today. They're going to be dead tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and month. Because other young people are reading the kinds of things and seeing the kinds of things that are available in the media today. We serial killers are your sons. We are your husbands. We are everywhere. And there will be more of your children dead tomorrow. I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, without question, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography. Don't you feel bad about what you've done? No. I don't feel guilty for anything. I feel sorry for people who feel guilt. What do you mean by that? Look, I don't want to beat around the bush with you anymore. I'm just tired. I'm as... I'm as cold a motherfucker as you've ever put your fucking eyes on. I don't give a shit about those people. Well-meaning, decent people. They'll condemn the behavior of a Ted Bundy while they're walking past a magazine rack full of the very kinds of things that send young kids down the road to be Ted Bundys. And what about you as a kid, Ted? Weren't you one of those decent people once? No. I didn't know what made people want to be friends. I didn't know what made people attractive to one another. I didn't know what underlay social interactions. And how did that make you feel, Ted? Sometimes... I felt like a vampire.
Janice, meet Denise. Denise, meet Janice. Hello, Ted. I know you didn't request the last meal, but we have something for you if you'd like. Okay, that's fine. Well, uh, your mother wishes to speak to you. She's on line two on uh, that one. I'm sorry, we have to stay. Ted? Is that you? Mm-hmm. Oh, 
son. I don't know how it got to this, but I know in my heart that you are a good person, and this is all a mistake. Time's up. Ted? Teddy? Are you still there? It's time to go. Anything you'd like to say before we proceed? I'd like you to send my love and regards to my family and friends. I lived.
Teddy? Is that you? Ted Bundy was executed this morning at 7 o'clock. His last-minute appeals for clemency denied. I'm not making a lot of money out of this. Just trying to get the message out. Authorities at Stark Prison stated that Bundy spent the night praying and... Yes? Yes, I'm being told his body is being removed from the prison right now. There it goes. Live right here on Network 9 News, past the protesters who have been waiting since the early hours. Like a mountain in spring. 